So today we're talking about spiritual conviction. <coughs> and it occurs to me that it might be good if we first define those two terms. So let's start with conviction. And I don't know about you, but when I hear the word conviction, my first place my mind goes is to the legal system. <laughs> <laughs> And that is not the kind of conviction we're talking about. Although, many of us operate spiritually from that guilt, shame, and blame, fear, convicted place. So we're going to look at that. How are we defining spiritual? Because one of the things that I've noticed in my own life and in the lives of folks that I chat with is that we have the tendency to spiritualize our humanity and think that is spiritual practice. Not so much. The spiritual is the absolute. It is the unconditioned realm. And in human form, we are very much conditioned reality. Neither's better than the other. We're all part of the one. It's different aspects of the one. And it's important that we are clear which one we're talking about when we're talking. I think I shared this last week, the Ernest Holmes quote about many of us think our thoughts create reality. This has never been true. Thinking the world was flat never made the world flat. It simply flattened our experience of it. Mm -hmm. That is spiritualizing humanity. Mm -hmm. Thinking that my thoughts actually change reality. They don't. What they, what they create is my experience of reality. Me thinking that you're somebody that you are or that you aren't doesn't change you. It changes how I interact with you, which may, in fact, set you up to interact in a way that validates my belief about you. <laughs> but it hasn't changed you. It simply made you part of my video game. <laughs> <coughs> because that's a whole lot of what it's like that we're doing here. It's like we're one big video game, and who has the controller today? Right? If we're practicing a spiritual conviction, then we're clear about what spirit is. Now, Conviction actually comes from the verb convince, which is with conquer. It goes all the way back to the Latin, with conquer, which suggests that there might sort of in some realm be a process that involves conflict. <laughs> and if you think about your belief system, how much of it is in conflict with you? How much of it evolved through conflict? That one I can answer, all of it. <laughs> Every belief that we hold evolved from conflict with something. Because that's how our human attention is ignited. There's, there's something that draws our attention. So if everything were just smooth, what would we attend to? Nothing. It's the bumps that make us go, what's that over there? <laughs> Well, what's that in here? So every belief we have is coming from a process of conflict. So knowing that, if we can begin to embrace conflict as good, 
we might be a lot less challenged by. Ernest Holmes, when he taught affirmative prayer, taught denials. He taught that element of conflict where it's necessary that we have that internal argument in order to get beyond it. Don Miguel Ruiz, when he talks about the four agreements, he talks about the nature of the internal conflict and the necessity of it in order to break the agreements that we are just blindly, silently following. So there's, there's precedent for it all the way around. Ultimately, we are all operating from some spiritual conviction. And to me, that's the scariest part of spiritual conviction. Is it whether I agree with it or not makes no difference. Whether I am conscious that I am living from and creating from a spiritual conviction or not doesn't change that I am. In the Bible, in the book of Mark, somewhere around verse 22 or 23, I believe, chapter 9, Folks are coming to Jesus and they're like, man, we got all this illness. Can you help us? And he's like, can I? What? You can help yourself. Yes, I can help you. And you can help yourself because what you believe is what is showing up. See, this, this idea of we create from our beliefs is not new to science of mind. Jesus says the same thing. If you believe you can be healed, you'll be healed. And if you believe you're going to be sick, you're going to be sick. Because that's what happens. So we are creating from whatever we believe, whether we are consciously aware of it or not. So doesn't it make sense that maybe we shift out of passively watching our lives like a movie? Because that's what we do. When we're in that place of unconscious belief, we're watching a movie and we're a character in it. And I'm going to invite you to take the controller and participate in your life like it's a video game. Now, I know that might be a strange analogy for some folks, but check it out. Here's the thing about video games. In order to power up to the next level, you have to get experience. That's the only thing that powers you up to the next level, is experience. Is playing the game. So what if the way we power up to the next level of awareness is experience. Then maybe we embrace it a little differently instead of trying not to have the experiences that we're having. Then we use them in a way that goes, oh, I created this so I can power up. <laughs> Here's the other thing about video games. We play them because we know, we operate from a conviction that there is a way to win. We may not know what it is, but we know there's a way to win. We believe deeply the game is designed for success. Yes? Your life is designed for success. It's no different. Creation made every one of us with a plan and a program and a platform for success and gave us each the controller. So maybe if we actually took hold of the controller and started... <laughs> Actively participating rather than just watching. <laughs> what happened to my life? 
Because mm -hmm. seriously, see, you guys know what I'm talking about because when I hit those, oh, that, we all laugh together. And that's a good thing. Here's the other thing about video games. The more adversaries you run into, the closer you are to winning. You notice that? <laughs> the more difficult it gets, the closer we are to victory. And those of you who have played video games know that that's a different level of excitement. Those are those places where our spouses or our significant others or our parents are going, hello, dinner's ready. Yeah, 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 I know. <laughs> and we are so energized and so connected that we're willing to ignore everything else to stay in the game because we're engaged. What if you did that with your life? What if the more adversity you encountered, you operated from that same conviction that, oh wow, I'm close to victory. And you energized your commitment to the process. You can watch the movie, or you can play the game. How involved are you? And I would submit to you that your level of involvement is directly related to your belief, to the conviction that is operating at the very silent core of your being about what you believe the game is programmed for. And many of us are in that place of I just show up and follow my nose and wherever life leads me, that's just my fate. Because that's the game we're playing. That's the platform that we've agreed to. And guess what? That's exactly how your game is going to go. And you will express victimhood because you're living in victimhood. You're living in I don't have any control. I'm just here for the ride. Which means somebody else is always in charge. And it also means you have advocated all responsibility for your experience. There's that R word again. Because if I have no responsibility, <laughs> I give up all my rights to change anything because I've assigned that to you. And if you look at how many yous there are in the world, you can begin to understand why a life that has surrendered to the population at large is a life that feels completely controlled and out of control and scary, because you really don't have any clue what is coming from one day to the next. That companies really are dictating your life. That your employer really is in charge of your finances. Because you've agreed to that. Now, I would submit that if we really understand that we are the divine in form, all of that goes right out the window. All of that goes right out the window. If you find yourself sitting around wondering what God wants you to do, you're listening to other people. Because a God outside of us that guides us and tells us what to do is a spiritualized human idea. It is not spiritual in nature. God does not know what you're going to do until you do it. Seriously. Because think about it. You are the divine in form. We have free will. 
You cannot simultaneously have free will and a directive. <laughs> Doesn't work that way. I mean, and it blows my mind every time I think about it. And when I articulate it, it moves me to some place that I can't even define. But this is the truth. You are so important. You matter so much that creation made you and then said, show me who I am. Not show me who you are. Show me who I am. That's what you're here for. Because the divine cannot make itself more. It's already infinite. How do you increase infinite? You don't. We are here so it can experience itself. Not so it can expand itself, but so it can experience itself. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Our job is to show God a good time. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're here for. And there's no rules. There's no limits. Now I know, to some of us, that triggers that what do you say, anarchy? <laughs> In human terms, that's what we might call it. But spirituality doesn't have a dark side. What creates a shadow? You know? Blocked light. The shadow is nothing more than blocked light. Rumi says it this way, our job is not to create more love, but simply to remove the barriers that we've created against it. Our job is to remove the blocks that are creating the shadow. Our job is to step fully into our spiritual identity. And in order to do that, some of us might sort of kind of have some misinformation floating around masquerading as our spiritual conviction. If you're afraid of God, that's old stuff, that's shadow work. Because you are that in form. You're that. There's nothing to be afraid of. Nothing. There's no punishing God. There's no scorebook. That's all made up stuff. It's all made up. If, if I'm afraid of what's going to happen to me in this human realm, that's my shadow side. That's my attachment to this <clears throat> rather than to what I really am. I have confused the truth of me with my vehicle. Um, I love how Brother Kathy Ann Lewis puts it in terms of uh, <laughs> thinking I'm spiritual, just assuming I'm spiritual, coming here every Sunday doesn't make me any more spiritual than if, than if I stand in my garage and think I'm a car. It doesn't make me a car. <laughs> <laughs> it, it just doesn't. <clears throat> I am who I am. I can't change that piece. I am the divine in form. So are you. Right now the divine is talking to itself, listening to itself. Seems kind of narcissistic in human terms, doesn't it? <laughs> and maybe it is. So what? So what? Well, there again, it's where we're here. Humanizing, we're spiritualizing human concepts, thinking it's spiritual. Practicing the presence is learning to literally practice living the truth of who we are. That's practicing the presence. Practicing being. 
present as the I am. I want to close with this. That adversarial place, that's where our shadows show up. I recently had a significant health scare. And I was blown away at how quickly, how automatically I went to disaster. What that teaches me, I still got stuff. I still have socialized beliefs floating around in there. And the real tipping point was when I heard, see, I told you so. <laughs> Whose voice is that? Whose voice is that? And it was my mother. And it was my father. And it was teachers. It wasn't mine. But I had certainly embraced it to the level that it's silently operating in there. Now I want to assure you that physically, I'm just fine. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm in conversation with a couple of medical professionals about how to suggest that something needs to be checked out without catastrophizing their hunches <laughs> that may or may not have some validity. In it. Uh, because that's ultimately what happens. Like, I think it might be this. You should go check that out now. I'm like, uh, and then followed with, but don't freak out. I'm like, too late. <laughs> too late. <laughs> and the beauty of it is I got to see what's operating in the silence in me. So again, the video game, the more adversarial it gets, the closer I'm getting. The closer I'm getting. I invite you to embrace to embrace that voice inside that wants to argue with your heart so that you can change the conversation rather than watch a movie. You're playing the game. Let's take this into prayer. <laughs> that it is all form, knowing itself, being itself, experiencing itself. In this human realm, as form. And as form, it gives itself freely to itself. So everything that it is, is my life. It is the life of everyone in the sound of my voice and beyond. It is the life of this building, the air that I breathe. It is the life of the history that runs through my thoughts, of the generational conditioning, all a part of the one inseparable. And so I know that with it being all one, that it all operates in that same malleable flexibility as the one. That within me is the power to change based on my beliefs. That truly it is done unto me as I believe. Not because I believe, but as I and so in that truth, I take full responsibility for what I believe. And I invite anything unlike the absolute truth of divinity, the absolute love of divinity, the absolute perfection of divinity, that anything unlike that be brought to 
to the surface, to my attention, so that the power born within me to transform everything gets to transform that. Knowing that as I transform my life, I transform the whole, because we are one and the same. <laughs> Grateful for this opportunity to know the truth, to remember how the law works, to remember who and whose I am. Grateful to feel every fiber of my being filled with excitement and joy as it knows itself a bit deeper in this moment. And so it is in this gratitude that I release my word, which is the word of the divine spoken as me into the law that only knows yes, has already said yes, and already made it so. And I invite you, if any of this prayer resonates with you, that you make it your own as we say together. Amen.